Here we go, they're getting locked up. Um, they're looking in the signal, and Nate, our producer, he's right on it, gives them the thumbs up. We're coming into game one. Rom versus Pikachu. And it's going to be interesting, you know, the story is going to be is Isam going to be able to get in on the range of Krom or is Mr. R going to be able to dictate the pace by holding an Isam at bay? Let's find out. Yeah, these are two really explosive characters when they get a hit, so it's really interesting to see how they fire around each other in neutral and, you know, make sure that they get those attacks. But the, the one thing, though, I'm really looking out for Isam is these edge guards, man, because Krom recovery, uh, so many ways to just get intercepted by Pikachu's hitboxes. Right, of course, and that's that's definitely what East Sam's going to be looking forward, uh, looking forward to. But yeah, yeah, Mr. R on the other side, he's going to try to do his best to hold the stage, make the, put the wall up, and not let East Sam break through. Yeah. And right now, it's uh, yeah, Mr. R with a little bit of a lead and a slime advantage Ooh. and a big hit. Here we go. I love that he used that new mechanic of being able to turn around your neutral B. So he followed where uh, East Sam was DIing while he was charging it and just hit him with it as soon as he landed. Really good. And you saw Isam trying to trade with that out special. He got the trade, it just it didn't go very far with that forward smash. Ooh, the weak the hits. jab blocks. Yeah. Oh, wow, I hadn't seen it as far as I was thinking. But uh, yeah, Isam's one of the players that you never want to miss a tech against because he's always ready with the jab block. Right. Okay, and, great dancing play. And already Mr. R putting on a little bit of a lead, 36%. On to 48% onto that second stock. And Isam's going to have to figure out a way to kill. And there it is. If that's, a, if that's a knock on Pikachu, right, you know, when they get into those high percents, kind of that Marth syndrome where they have a difficult time putting stocks away until really high percents. Yeah, that's kind of when I see Isam struggle a bit is when he's really trying to find the kill and he just kind of like forces it a little bit too much. But that's just kind of a symptom of Pikachu. Right. That's why he has to really rely on like these edge guards. And look, they had an opportunity to open up a little bit, but Isam playing a little safe and backed off. And paying for it, Mr. R looking so solid, playing on so much damage oh, and getting some kill. Clean. Clean parry into the Epsilon at the ledge. Uh, this is another really good option against Pikachu's quick attack just because it extends his hurt box like so far. You throw out like a long last move like an Epsilon, it'll definitely connect. Yeah, you kind of got to read the, the moment that the Pikachu player wants to get in there with quick attack and you can snipe that hurt box. Yeah, he's got him going and Mr. R just keeps running away with it just a little bit. You can see him try to cover his approach in there with the Thunder Jolt, but Mr. R snuffed right through it and he's continuing to put on big damage. Ooh, another one? Wow, almost takes the first game straight away, but Isam holding on to dear life, but that's probably going to do it right yes. there. That jab from Krom and Roy is just so good at like scooping people up, and uh, I believe it's really safe on shield too, so it, if you're in a defensive position like at the ledge there, you're under a lot of pressure when he throws mm -hmm. that off. And if it hits, you just get the kill. Right. Just off. And you saw that. That's what happened with Mr. R, just putting on so much damage. So so many stocks taken so quickly, a clean two stock. Yeah, very and, clean. And Asam's going to have to make some adaptations. Um, you know, at this level, it's always hard to see. You know, all these players are so good. It's always yeah. hard to find the holes and the weaknesses. Yeah. I got to say, man, for me seeing like a first time Mr. R playing, I'm, I'm super impressed with the crown pick. But since uh, he had a lot of sh good showings like in the start of the game, a lot yeah. of people were playing him. But then slowly and surely, you haven't seen that much. But, so it's cool to see someone uh, sticking to the character really showing he can do. And I think, it, it, I don't know, it kind of seems like Krom has kind of been a little bit on the rise just because of, like, you know, you saw at Frostbite show you oh, doing definitely. so well. And now you have Mr. R here, you know, trying to take a stake into top eight and maybe even go further. Um, so Krom is showing that he has the tools. You just got to, you know, be careful about the edge and just do your best. And on the flip side, of course, uh, Esam has been doing so well across all the tournaments, but had a little bit of stumble at Frostbite, and he's just kind of trying to do his best to you know, right the ship and get back on track. But so far, not looking so good coming into the first game. Mr. R picking up right where he left off. Yeah, it's really good how well Mr. R is able to move around in mid-range. It's like when he wants to approach like these Thunder Jolts, Mr. R just like throwing out a hitbox right over it or just maneuvering around them. And once he gets in, he gets so much damage. And it's interesting because it's usually how the uh, the Pikachu player likes to play the matchups, typically trying to, you know, weave in and out. And, oh, here we go. And... You know, despite the percent lead, Mr. R is going to have to figure out a way to take this stock. Kind of solidify what the, that there's an actual lead. At this percent, Pikachu might be able to pick up a rogue edge guard like right here. Mr. R is in a little bit of trouble. Oh, there we beautiful, go. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, man. Waiting out that air dodging in the down there. Great stuff from Isa. And Mr. R looks like he's getting hit a little bit by the jank. Got, got baited out by the thunder by Pikachu. Uh, but he's able to clean up that stock. And we got a pretty even match despite Mr. R roaring out up front. Yeah. Uh, 
I haven't really seen Isan pull off that many combos. It's like been really difficult for him to approach, which is something I kind of uh, mm. would expect from him. Right. He's, yeah, he's just got to put all his effort into breaking through that wall and zone. And but to his credit, he's been doing a really good job about keeping Mr. R, you know, positionally off stage and when he's in trouble, capitalizing on those moments. Definitely. It's like you, you don't have to win every single neutral exchange. You just got to win the important ones. Oh, wow, man. Another character that's amazing at tech chasing is Krom, right. dude. That uh, down tilt into like a tech read, F smash, so strong. Yeah, Krom, if you give him an inch in that advantage situation, he's going to take a mile out of it. Okay, back of the ledge here. Wow, that was really <laughs> far off. I can tell he's going to die. Okay. I, wonder, I wonder if that might have been a little bit of poor DI, like the brawl style DI yeah. that ended up dying right there. Okay, he's keeping it really close. Trying to read a roll in with the episode with no dice. And he looks like he's got the wheels turning now. Ooh. Big damage. Okay, trying to keep this in here at the ledge. Covering so many options right now. Let's see if we can finish it off here. Nice. Keeping him uh, really where when you can use that up B off stage. Yeah, and, and finally Mr. R is able to restore some semblance of order and get back of control of the stage. Uh, unfortunate miss input went to the wrong direction because that was kind of his opportunity to really bring it back. Let's see if he's able to find another one or if ESAM's going to close this out and bring the set back to even. This can still be really scary for ESAM, though. I, I'm just looking for that rope down tilt for Mr. R and yeah. like tech chase F smash. Like, you can see he's looking for it right here. Crown is like so strong. Yeah, Mr. Oh, oh there we go. Off the jump. Nice timing. And of course, these two players would go one to one and make it now looking into a three game, uh, three game set. Winner moving on. Of course, loser dropping into the loser's bracket. Yeah, and uh, loser racket has tweak in it, so you definitely <laughs> you don't want to go down go there. there. There are definitely some sharks in the water. You don't want to, you know, bleed at all on the on the winner's bracket and fall there. It's a quick trip home at that point. And all these players, they came out because they want to punch that ticket into the summit. Yeah, it's crazy that like these so many uh, great players, and like only one of them can get in. Right. You know? All right. Let's see. Uh, I, I feel like a battlefield pick. Coming mm -hmm. in from uh, Mr. R. Yeah, yeah, he has some platform control and just covering it. Yeah, there. Oh, wait. I got, was that Battlefield FD mode, though? I thought I saw the weird the weird icon on it. That's, uh, we'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's just Battlefield. Yeah, I like this uh, pick just because it gives um, Mr. R a little bit more options to mm -hmm. recover. But, oh, it was Omega. Are getting Omega. I, I okay. told you. Wow. <laughs> I thought I saw that like really quick. Like, yeah, he went to, he's like, I don't want platform, but actually the complete opposite. So let's see how he works through that. Um, I don't know. Maybe he thinks that he can open up the game a little bit. Okay. Well, I mean, this is also a strong stage for Crom 2 yeah. goes because he has such good movement. And once he like traps you in the air, it's very easy for you for him to punish your landings because you don't have platforms to retreat to. Right. And on the flip side of it, he probably just, you know, maybe wants to limit the mobility options of Pikachu that, Ooh. you know, if he goes for the quick attack, he's going to go have to go right through him. Has Esam in a little bit of trouble off stage, But Esam always so confident down there, you know, just nice, easy skull bash to the thunder and then yeah. recovers. Oh, oh my goodness. There we go. Looking <laughs> like Smash 64 Kirby right there, just dragging <laughs> him down and Ethan, surviving. The Ether Spike. Yeah, Esam probably want that stock back. Kind of got caught sleeping just a little bit. Oh, that's so big. I really like these uh, follow-ups into the, the ether. Mm -hmm. So much damage. And doesn't get the Thunder Spike hitbox, and we're right back into it. And you see Esam desperately trying to find something to kill. He's throwing out dash attacks, back airs, off stage, Just something to get the kill. Double jump, really good recovery there from Mr. R, but now he's back. Nice. Try to get the DI mixed up. I'm probably DIing for the F throw, but still no follow. But there is the dash attack. Reliable way to catch a landing and get the kill there. And Mr. R jumps right back into it, and he's got a fall, or he had a little bit of a juggle situation, but missed his opportunity, and Esam is, has him off stage. Followed him down there, and he's right back into neutral. And a, maybe a misfortunate air dodge. Air dodge right back into the thick of it, right into the business end of a Krom sword. But Esam's able to get that forward smash, and it's pretty much tied up the game. Oh. But a big pickup, jab into the back air. Oh, man, what a clank there from yeah. Mr. Arch. Again, calling out that quick attack. Really good timeline hitboxes here. 
Yeah, he got the uh, the clank rather than the actual true, just yeah. hit right through it. Oh, Oof, so strong. Nice. That yeah. neutral air again is another really good option that he has for a punching ledge jump from the ledge. Oh, jab block hit. Back at the ledge here. Oh, rolls right past going to be the free dancing blade. That's 21%. That's kind of scary when you have to deal with a character like Krom. And he, he spot dodged that and got a down smash, and he has Mr. Iron Trouble off stage. Maybe he, needs, uh, he doesn't want to be too aggressive because he's always afraid of that trump card option that Krom has with the stock lead. He could always just up them both to the death. Exactly. He's going to stall the thunder here. And Mr. R, it's something I've just noticed that hasn't changed from Smash 4. He has really strong ledge trapping. Mm -hmm. once, you ha once he has you there, he covers so many options. It just makes it so scary. And it might be why he likes, you know, uh, Krom as a character over Lucina, for example, on the top tier meta because his ledge trap game is so strong. He doesn't have to rely as much as, you know, going off stage and playing the edge guard game. Okay. But, but a dash attack by Esam will put him right into the set. If he can get the wheels turning, it might be enough to steal the game, but Mr. R looking very comfortable. Yeah, I feel like Mr. R realizes that in this situation, the main way he can lose is well, being, being taken off stage. Yeah. <laughs> this is trouble. Stage. Oh, oh my god, this is it. Jump? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it again anyway, for good measure. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh my goodness, Esam. Esam almost made that way too scary. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. He probably wanted one more back air and didn't quite get it. Oh, oh. there we go. That was actually really scary. I thought <laughs> he was definitely <laughs> gone there. Yeah, Esam probably kicking himself a little bit. He had a golden opportunity, was back airing. Mr. R for days off stage and just, you know, he had just enough juice to get back and yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, that was actually an amazing recovery for Mr. R. Yeah. Like, using the double jump and then getting that right air dodge trip, even after getting back air like a thousand times. Yeah, he saved it for so long, I thought he was dead for sure. Like, at least two of those back airs. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that super deep one, too. Yeah, good. for sure. And of course, the winner of this makes their way into top eight, yeah. so. Quite a bit running, uh, riding on the line. Actually, uh, more than just top eight winner of this is guaranteed fifth place at the tournament because uh, they yeah. make it to winter semis. Yeah, it's really big, especially because these are the two players that are not like auto invited to the summit. So right. they came here specifically to get into the, the summit here. So. Definitely, it's like uh, episode zero of the ultimate summit. It's yeah. just the uh, the prelude. Interesting yeah. to see. He's got town and city uh, throwing a little more platforms into the mix. Uh, we have, and of course, the uh, score is 2-1. Mr. R looking very, very good right now. Hey, you want to talk about a breakout? Mr. R over ESIM uh, for his yeah. first, you know, stateside tournament? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't think everyone expected, like, Mr. R to do really well. It just, he hadn't had an opportunity to show it. Right. Know? Really consistent player. I believe in the top 10 throughout all of Smash 4, which is something that not a lot of people could say. Definitely. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's always nice to see these players when they get their opportunity. You know, you always want them to make the most of it. And so far, Mr. R doing just that. And so much damage that just that, you know, that landing back here right into the uh, up special. It's nice, easy follow-ups. But yeah. it does look like uh, he is having some trouble doing with that, you know, that should I tech or should I not situation. And kind of maybe gets in his own head and ends up letting Nissan get some jab blocks. There's been quite a few this set already. Yeah. He sounds on point too. Even though like a tech in place or a tech roll in or away, he can definitely react and punish mm -hmm. really well. Yeah, I think the the thing for Esam right now is just to slow it down and see if he can slowly like, pick apart Mr. R and not really force the approach. Right. When Mr. R punches, he punches really hard. Yeah, it's a, definitely a hurting bomb. It's a uh, almost like a heavyweight prize fight. <laughs> uh, Esam going to the jab game and just throwing out thunder jolts and trying to keep his space in. And he has Mr. R in a little bit of trouble off stage. This is where he wants to capitalize. Yeah. And he might have to start moving away from that, trying to punish that Aether in that ma in that manner just because Ooh. he's been getting nothing out of it. And Mr. R takes the first stock lead one game away from his ticket into top eight. But it does catch that double jump there. Seems I'm off stage with the forward air. Let's see if Esam can really uh, start abusing these edge guards because really he just has been having the hardest time. Right, more of what he had that last stock of, uh, of game three, or, yeah. you know, just uh, he's definitely, just because we know that Krom's recovery is a suspect, he's just got to call it out. 
But easier said than done against, oh, of course, yeah. against Mr. R. Got to get him in that situation. But right here, this could be an opportunity. And he just doesn't seem to really have a, a clear-cut answer on how to punish um, uh, punish Aether on the edge guard situation. If uh, or if that is, his plan might just be a little uh, little off, needs some adjusting. Yeah, I think Mr. R is also just really making it hard to catch. Mm -hmm. He's yeah, like really good holding, spacing. Yeah, he's always holding back just slightly to avoid overshooting the ledge. Mm. Oh. All right, really scary situation here, but nice dash attack. It's such a, it's an awkward um, move to get killed by. Yeah. Hey, well, whatever works, and wow, that almost looked like a repeat of the last game, but not quite enough to kill. And Esam with just a little bit of a lead, he'd probably love to put more damage on than he did right there, and. Mr. R one stock away. Yeah, I don't know if we can call it an upset though, right? It's yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's an upset, but is it really? Kind yeah, of one of those Mr. Questions. R is really strong. Like his, he may be um, low seated only because he just hasn't had an opportunity to show up. Big opportunity for Esam. He's got the wheels turned in on the loops. Big damage. Here we go. And despite that, Mr. R in like two exchanges has pretty much brought himself right back to pretty even. Like right on cue, and here we go. He's actually taking just a slight lead. Yeah, it's a thing I'm noticing. Even Mr. R gets caught in, oh, wow, did he catch that whip punch? Dang, wow. the slight dash back to avoid the fair and get the, the forward smash. That's actually really good with uh, Krom, just because he doesn't have to rely on like these uh, tipper kind mm -hmm. of hitboxes like Roy. All parts of the sword have a strong uh, hit, so all he has to do is get that slight whip punish, like right. spacing, and he can kill you really easily. Yeah, just but catching uh, Esam overextending just a little bit on that forward air. That's because he knows that Esam's going to get a lot of mileage off a of forward air confirming the into something on the on the you know getting rid of the uh, the strong hit. Yeah. But if he can bait that out, that forward smash is so powerful as we saw. Good stuff for Mr. R taking that set. Yeah, I feel like Crumb really fits his play style really well. Yeah. 